Hello friends, how are you? My name is Corbin Reed and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I'm very excited to be bringing you the first in a series called What's Your Story? In this series I interview artists in the design space. Some of them are actually interior designers or in the interior design world. Some of them are in the fashion world. Some of them are actors. The point is, is they're artists and I dig their style and I think you guys will as well. And I interview them. I interview them specifically on their interior design style, even if that's not their main focus as an artist. And we just really dig into the why behind their interior design, their personal story, their personal influence in the space. Um, a lot of them are people who value items that have a story, which is the whole theme of this channel, um, the same way that I do. So yeah, I think you're really gonna enjoy it. This first one is with an artist named John Eaton, and I met him in Hudson, New York when I was up there in New York City and when I was taking trips up to Hudson to shop for my own home for antiques, and he owned one of the galleries that I was looking at, and I was just really into his style. It really stood out. It was a gallery that had like an antique warehouse, actually, that had, I don't know, at least like 50 vendors, and his and one other vendor really stood out to me, unfortunately. I didn't get to interview the other vendor, but I did get to interview John. So that's what this is. I hope you enjoy, and let's get into it. John Eaton, and we're at the warehouse in Hudson, um, door 15, uh, where there are tons of antiques for sale here, and I have my gallery in this space, 2,800 square feet, and um, it's an amazing place to visit. From Paris, actually, after living a year in Paris, um, that was quite the experience. It's something I'd always wanted to do forever, and I found the chance to do it, and it was quite um, uplifting and rewarding, you know, to finally do something that you set out to do. Um, I got to a place in life that I needed to absorb something more than um, New York City was offering me, and um, so I came up with this idea to do this, and here I am. <laughs> I'm selecting things for my uh, gallery here. It's usually natural woods um, and natural materials, marble. Uh, neutral tones are a big um, plus for me. I prefer, I always tell my friends and uh, customers that it's brown, black, white, or gray. That's what I do. And it just keeps a neutral palette for uh, other pieces. If you have really bright art, then everything around it is calm. You know, I'm a self-proclaimed uh, Francophile and, you know, for all of my adult life I had this affectation for France and Paris in particular. So whenever I reference uh, things for my shop, for my gallery here, it's usually with some French undertone going on there and also I am very much inclined to choose really beautiful ethnic African pieces that are very appealing to me as well. Um, uh, generally, uh, objects from around the world, you know, whether it's India or China or anywhere that has interesting arts and crafts, uh, furniture, I'm interested in what they do. This is a long story, but I'm going to try to make it very brief. Um, mother, grandmother. Uh, my parents, when I was in the second grade, we bought our first house, and my mother and I would go shopping for furniture every day after I was out of school, and I was allowed to design my own bedroom um, at that age with our decorator that we had in our small town in North Carolina. And so that, I think, started the process. Uh, my grandmother would come 
to our house on Sundays and critique everything. And it just kept growing from there. And I had a small shop in New York City in the um, mid-90s to the early 2000s on, uh, in the East Village. And it just kept kept my honor to furniture and nice things. And that's what I like to look at. That's what I like to be around. And then now I can offer it to people. And they seem to like it. Having traveled the world, literally around the globe, shopping for antiques, I would say I'm most inspired by the beautiful galleries and um, furniture stores in Paris, of course. And then you move on to London, where there are also very great interior shops. Um, but just the world in general, uh, most major cities have the most exquisite antiques that you can ever find. Um, and I find, you know, going to the south of France, it's always a treat to um, go through the flea markets there and, and find pieces that are treasures as well. So back in the 90s, I had a very important, um, at the time I thought was very important, and it was a Japanese lantern that uh, sat in my shop there for a hot minute. And um, there was a photo shoot with New York Magazine, and it was you know on the pages of New York Magazine for the Christmas shopping story. And then a, someone uh, whom I know came and she purchased the, um, the lantern and we're still friends today. And you know, I think at that time in New York City, there was a, a supplier there on Broadway. He imported um, quite a few interesting odd um, antique Japanese pieces. One of the few people who were doing that at the time, um, because Japanese pieces can tend to be very expensive, uh, especially the vintage pieces. But I happened to come across this lantern and it was something I couldn't live without and apparently Christine couldn't live without it either. But like I said, I'm glad that she has this and I know where it is and we're still in contact. Yeah. Normally when I sell things to people, um, I like to see where it goes and how it's installed and that makes me feel really good because they usually have the same aesthetic or better aesthetic, I should say sometimes. And um, that makes me really feel really good when I know that it's appreciated and cared for and placed properly. Even up until about maybe two months ago, Christine was here in my gallery and we laughed about the Japanese lantern all over again. It was one of the better things that I've ever had in my life. And I'm glad I know who owns it. It's a great thing. I like to think that when you place a piece that you have purchased from me here, um, that it adds to the harmony of everything else that you own and your home and that it offers you some pleasant visual when you're you know, looking around your home and thinking about the things you have and also I hope that um, I have made it a pleasant experience for you to acquire these pieces so that you know, when you look at it you think, oh, that's from a nice place, it's a nice piece, I love it. And so it's all about the harmony, I think, that um, I try to offer um, to people. This lamp is my iconic spiral floor lamp that I designed in 1994 uh, in my shop in New York City. So, you know, the shop lasted for about six, seven years and I kept the sample for myself. When I moved to Hudson in 2019, I decided to find someone who could reproduce this lamp and it has stood the design test of time. People still love it. I've sold so many of these. I was lucky to find someone who could reproduce it for me. And um, yeah, it's turned out to be the John Eaton iconic spiral floor lamp, I'll call it. This is the iconic Curtis Jure 1976 brass um, column form lamp. It's one of my favorite pieces. I was quite excited to find it and I don't mind owning it and it is for sale but I always choose things that I don't mind looking at for eternity if I have to but yeah it's a great piece. American designer, um, I think he lived in Los Angeles for a long time of his life and designed a lot more pieces that are a little bit more detailed and this is one of his simpler forms here. And here we have a group of six late 19th century uh, French monastery um, chairs that I'm absolutely in love with. They're in the original green uh, velvet upholstery. 
And the wood is mahogany with nail head details. It's one of my favorite pieces. They tend to have a bit of a modern look, but yet in essence, they're quite, quite old. These have a lot of different sources for um, inventory. And one of my many sources are people who um, sort of buy out houses. And one of my friends who bought out a house presented these to me knowing that I would like them. So I did acquire them that way. Thank you so, so much for watching and tuning in. I always like to hear from you guys, so if you enjoyed this, please let me know what you enjoyed down below in the comments or even just say hi, how's your day going, whatever. I love hearing from you guys. Also be sure to hit the notification bell and subscribe so that you don't miss any videos. Um, and you can also follow me on Instagram at storydesigns underscore with Corbin Reed here and I'm also on TikTok at at story designs. Thank you so much for tuning in guys and I'll see you in the next one.